Okay. Okay. You could also see it on YouTube. You can see the trainings on YouTube? Yeah, the last 40 or so. Nice. And this is live on YouTube right now. That's why I'm saying outside. Because anybody can hear us in New Zealand. Okay. You never know. I got a plastic gun at home. Yeah. Oh. Just serious. Okay. It's a one bullet. Yeah, it's a call right? Well, you know, you can only have seven bullets set. Even if you're retired, FBI, CIA, whatever, you can only have seven bullets. Oh, just totally ridiculous. Whereas the criminals, the criminals don't obey the law. That's why laws shouldn't well, be passed. They might, they might obey. Criminals do not obey laws. They're right. law breakers. Well, no, they don't. They don't law break all breakers. Of them. No, they don't break all of them. They, they don't have to be really know busy. the law, and therefore they so, break the so, law. So not knowing so the law put is not excuse for not breaking it. They put fifty bullet clips in Are their glocks. Go? Okay. Yeah. Right. That that little boy Shh. on the bus. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. The people in New Zealand, they're not going to know what to make of this train. <laughs> all right. I want to thank you all for it's being not, here. Oh, we are starting. So I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, welcome back to our training. Uh, we are going to very quickly, we, we went through um, the public information officer stuff last week, but there are a couple of things that I left out because I didn't have it on the slides. So I'm going to pick that up, and then I'm going to let Lena, who is responsible for uh, putting our website together and our social media, to explain a little bit more about it. So, you know what we said about the public information officer, they're the person in the middle who takes the information in from all those sources and helps, it, helps put it out to the radio, to text, to web, to Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so basically the uh, public information's job Wally, are you comfortable? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Public information officer's job is to filter information and identify trusted sources versus the sources that need to be verified. We talked about the trusted sources being our team, the two-way radio reports, um, or any our team member calling in, or any kind of message from people we know is obviously a trusted source. Monitoring of police or fire emergency radios is a trusted source. Alerts from government agencies is a trusted source. And, and we talk about other media, but when we take reports from other media, we attribute it. So if we take a report from CNN, we're going to say according to CNN, because they might get it wrong too. So if they got it wrong, at least we say, well, we got it from them. <laughs> and it wasn't us. <laughs> um, sources that could be verified are unidentified callers on our hotline, um, email, Facebook posts, tweets to our Twitter account, or text. So the idea is if somebody calls the station and says, and this actually happened, um, we had a second explosion on So that's an example of how we go through the verification process. We'll respond to information, but if we don't know the source, we're going to verify it before we put it on the air or put it out on the Internet. Um, so when we do reports um, during an incident where we deploy, we try to have it timed so they go every hour, every half hour, every 15 minutes according to the severity of the incident. And the PIO's job is to make sure that report is ready for the on-air person at the top of the so First, you'll see um, in the very far right column, you see WHCR EBT Twitter alerts. 
So when we have Twitter alerts, they actually not you know they go out over Twitter, but you can also see them on our web page. So those were the actual live t uh, tweets from the day of the explosion, and so they stay up there until we haven't had any any Twitter activity since then. So that just stays there. But that's just something to let you know that in in the course of a live event, you can see. Our Twitter. You know, some of you may not even be on Twitter, but you can go to our website and you can see those announcements <coughs> there. You also see, as we scroll down, there is uh, the WHCR live feed, um, and so you see that there. Now, here's something else that's also important. If you see there in the left column where it says "Listen Live to New York City Emergency Radio Broadcast Channels," so we actually can click this and go to a page where we can hear feeds. These here are actually live feeds from different emergencies. So you see Brooklyn Fire, you see uh, FDNY, Staten Island. Scroll down and you, you'll see that there are more of those. The live feed from the fire department's um, uh, radio. Now I don't know if we are set up to hear this. Um,
explosion this morning. At that point in time, it was unconfirmed reports of a gas leak. You know, we talk about the update of the gas explosion. Um, as of 2.42, we were reporting, you know, at that point in time, they'd only uh, come up with two dead, two in life-threatening condition. So we were li literally taking the information in real time, you know, often from this side, and then reposting them on Facebook and Twitter here, you know. Um, so this is information where the people to look for loved ones. So this is one of the tools we use to be able to take information in and get it out very, very quickly in addition to the radio. And um, in this column here, what happens is in terms of mentions, whenever anybody puts our uh, Twitter handle here, at WHCREBT in there, then it comes up in our Twitter feed. So. This is something that was put up by Audrey Adams. This was something um, uh, South Harlem Sir put up um, celebrating our friend Wally again for his award. Wally, you're just all over this stuff here. Um, this, is, uh, this came from New York City OEM. Um, this is when we had uh, Commissioner Bruno on Audrey Adams' show, which is usually on Tuesday nights uh, about an hour before we get here. So we had in... Um, we had had in, in late December, or actually in, in, in November, we had uh, Commissioner Bruno on, and then we uh, had a link to the YouTube on it. So OEM's press office actually put that out and put us in there as a link. And this is actually Wally's first tweet, so <laughs> <laughs> he's now officially social media ready. So um, I wanted you guys to see this because these are the actual tools that we use in real time whether we're using it here in the studio when we set up our command center here, or even in the case of the day of the gas leak explosion, I was doing this work on my computer at home, but I was still taking the information in. I was feeding it into Tina here at the studio. She was taking that information and putting it on the air, and then I was taking the same information and putting it back out on Facebook and Twitter. So we have the opportunity to work together, even if we're all not here at the same time, we can still get some of the same things done, you know, thanks to the technology right. tools. Now, another great tool we have is, um, well, we left me there. Uh, hold on. We have the New York City traffic cameras. Now, as you know, we live in the age of Big Brother, and, you know, cameras are everywhere. Uh, but, you know, in the case of an emergency, that can be a good thing. So, uh, again, when I say that there's times where we need to confirm reports, you know, sometimes there's no substitute for looking live and seeing what's going on. So this is a, a live feed from 121st, 24th Street and 1st Avenue right now where we can actually see what's going on in the traffic. Um, during... Um, events like the New York City Marathon or the bike tour, um, we can use these cameras to see if there are any traffic issues. This is the Major Deegan at Triborough Bridge now. You know, we can see what's going on weather-wise. And so this is a very, very quick way for us to take a look around. This is a uh, 96th Street Henry Hudson Parkway. You know, so literally at the click of a button, this is 125th Street. You know, we can, you know, we have eyes on all sides of Harlem and we can see what's going on. So this is another tool that we use here in the EOC to take advantage of the fact that that information is available to us. And so whether it's a weather emergency or something else, we at least can take, take a look for ourselves and we don't have to take somebody's word for it. We can see what's happening off of the live camera. Of the sites we monitor also going to their website. I'm just going to change. 
we'll ha come up with a basic template and then just kind of change it for each report. So this was actually something we used um, on uh, February 13th. Um, and so it reads, this is, this is literally what the person on the air will read. This is a WHCR emergency broadcast team weather update. Announcements from OEM, we would write whatever announcements in there. Alternate side of the street parking is suspended until Monday. The weather conditions, whatever changes there are throughout the, uh, the, the course of the evening, we would write those changes in. But usually the weather report tends to stay the same over the course of maybe, you know, five and six hour blocks. Um, and then we just change the temperature uh, according to the time that we do it. Um, we take the same information we get. Option, we put that in there, or if we know that because of the weather, all cities and buses are operating on a reduced schedule, you know, we ask motorists to drive at reduced speed, um, be careful crossing the street because of flooding at most crosswalks, you remember that from the winter, where we'd have, uh, you know, snow and then sleet, and the corners would be very, very dangerous because all the water clogs up there, so we would tell people, you know, watch out at the crosswalks. Look out for the needs of the elderly in your family and neighborhood. You know, knock on their door, check on them, make sure they've got water and groceries. So these are the types of things that we put in a template, and then we just change some of the basic information over the course of the evening. And so that's how that's something else that the public information officer does. But they don't have to write it out. You know, the whole thing each time. So the main thing for the PIO is to get the facts quickly get them accurately, and get them out. And um, this is the FEMA Public uh, Information Officer Awareness course. If you're interested in doing that, you can go to uh, this site online, and then, you know, you can see how that goes as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Lena. Hello. So I, uh, I put together the, the website uh, initially. So it's, I'm going to go ahead and go back and explain one, maybe this one, sorry. Uh, so one thing about the website, when you're looking at it, there's um, the bits on the top, you've got your header, you've got links to other parts of it, including the Hurricane Evacuation Center, which is here on the City College campus with a map to that. Um, and this, so everything around, the tweets are the most up-to-date stuff we have, while the the center bit is just the blog. Um, the blog is where you know the announcement that this meeting is that these meetings are happening goes, um, and that tries to also be reflected on the calendar. So this is all one part, which isn't as pressing of a concern in an emergency. It's mostly get the tweets out there because that will get it onto this page. So when you are in Hootsuite. How do you get that message out? And the answer is by typing it into this top compose box. So um, this is a test. I'm not going to send this out. But you see down here where it has this little blue bird? Why, why would you do a live tweet that just says uh, WHCR EBT training now in progress? All right, WHCR E uh, emergency broadcast training. Now in progress, or pro? Yeah, pro. Not progress. Process. No. Progress. Progress. Okay. All right. All right. So this will this will get it. This will get it to the Twitter um, with the little blue bird, but this will get us also to Facebook. So you can do both simultaneously, but there's a difference. Twitter is a micro-blogging platform, which means it's about the length of a text message. So it's under 140 characters, or equipped, like you can get up to 140 characters, which is why this one says 89 in the corner. So that's how far, how long this is, while Facebook has a much higher limit of how much information you can get out there. So if you just want a quick tweet, little bits of information, that's good for Twitter. Longer pieces are good for the Facebook page. That's one of the, the core things to know up here. And I can go ahead and send this. Does it tell you how many letters you have? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it says down there. Um, so oh, the 89? Yeah. 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 yeah, so oh. that's what the 89 was. So that's that's the main thing. We, it is possible 
Let me check real quick. Yeah. So that's that's the main thing. In emergency, what know which platforms you're talking to. Um, I thought you were also going to talk about the emergency SMS system at all. No, um, is this tweet good? No, this is actually Hootsuite. So Hoot, we use Hootsuite because it lets us get to both Twitter and Facebook. Okay. Um, which is which is why we're using Hootsuite instead of another because there are loads of programs that can like help you do Twitter better, help you do other things. This is something that lets us do both at the same time. Um, so you see in the middle and you see in the right column, you see where now what we just put there you see is now posted. So you see it says, uh, what does this say, 7.32 p.m., WHCR emergency broadcast training now in progress. That's on our Facebook page. The other set, you see the same thing, 7.30 p.m. via Hootsuite. That went out with Twitter. So if you check the Twitter feed, And likewise, you'll see that. on the home page, if we refresh it, which means to make it uh, look at it, uh, look for everything again, in a while, though, I don't know if it will be immediate, um, this will go out and grab the tweet. So you can see the Twitter is uh, the Twitter feed is not as fast when it's filtered through our homepage as it is if you're going to Twitter. Um, and it's because our 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 website is reaching out to Twitter to grab that stuff. It also may not have the totally correct time. It'll just have the right order. Just something that I haven't figured out how to fix yet. Um, but if anybody knows how to fix it, let me know. We should also also explain what hashtags are. So hashtags, um, there's, I don't know if we're using any hashtags. Well, we have them in the old, the ones that are up there, they're hashtags. So, so there are? No, the Hootsuite? ones on the site there where it says. Oh, oh on Hootsuite, on, sure. On, yeah, on, yeah. So um, the hashtag, which we did use, actually, Harlem Explosion, um, that, the hashtag, the the sharp sign, the number three when you hit shift, mm -hmm. um, that's a way to tag what you're doing. So if people don't know to look for us, they don't know to look for WHCR EBT, um, if they just look for hashtag Harlem Explosion, it would pop, pop up anyone who used that in their tweet. So it's a way that you get your, your message out better but only if you um, know know what the right hashtag is, um, which we can figure out from our home feed. It's because like a subject matter yeah, search. Yeah, it's a subject matter search. But right. you can, yeah. in an emergency, for example, I guess that if I put hashtag Harlem Explosion, yeah. somebody who's looking for something on Harlem Explosion might put that same hashtag in there and do it. And there were a lot of, a lot of tweets with the hashtag Harlem Explosion. Yeah. And so some people might also use har uh, hashtag Harlem and hashtag Explosion, mm -hmm. but they're gonna, it's going to pop up when they do the search. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, this is what the right, the right column is what you sent out. Where's the middle, the middle column is. Um, the middle column, the middle is, column Facebook. is Facebook. The, the right uh, column is Twitter. Both, both what we've sent out and what people we follow have said. So the home, the home feed is a little more, is a little uh, broad to that extent, because um, it's just if you went to, if you were logged in as us and went to Twitter.com, the home feed includes the things that people you follow have said. And if anyone has any suggestions on who else we should follow on Twitter, uh, you can you can send us a message on the mentions. You can say at WHCREBT, you should follow, and then say at somebody else. And we'll get that because we watch our mentions. Um, I don't know how quick we'll be to respond because one thing is a lot of our social medias are more engaged when, um, when there's an incident. So it's part of the, the difference between our um, our blog, which is the middle of the home page. Like, that only gets updated sometimes, while our Facebook and our Twitter are faster. And that's kind of expected. So what's your question? Well, there's a couple of things since, you, since, since I raised my hand. Um, I think uh, if you look at um, Twitter uh, and you're looking for hashtags, probably Harlem uh, Explosion probably came up. Um, quite a bit, so you probably would see that 
as one of the um, events that a lot of people are talking about. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to see that on your Twitter page. But the other thing is, I believe if you put twitter.com slash um, the, uh, the hashtag um, with the strike sign there, I believe that that comes up uh, that way. So that's a way that one can monitor oh, um, cool. the hashtag, if I'm correct. So if, yeah. Yeah. So if you say twitter.com slash, and you put the um, the uh, the, 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 the sign or the, uh, the, or the strike, the, uh, and then the name, mm -hmm. like the Harlem Explosion, right. It'll uh, pull, it'll everything up. Up, pull everything up that uh, people are talking okay. about. So these uh, are just results for just Harlem, and if I did Harlem, so I, I went to twitter.com and then um, the, the pound sign, the hashtag, right. and Harlem Explosion, um, it does, it does indeed pop yeah. up. So that's pictures and everything. So, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that's one way to do it. And um, the thing about the mentions, mm -hmm. if anybody puts your particular um, Twitter name in there with the at sign, mm -hmm. you should always be able to find it when you go into mentions, mm -hmm. so that you know what's being discussed relating to you. Somebody may not be talking directly to you, but they're saying about something you. regarding you, and that will also come up uh, in okay. mentions. Um, if we send out on our Twitter feeds uh, something about WEBT, that will probably increase the number of people who will um, also um, want to put you on their Twitter. Uh, followers. Because, right, followers, because um, there's a positive vibe that's out there, and this is something people would want to know and see on Twitter. What is WEBT doing? Um, even when there's not something that is happening, um, that's like an explosion or something like that. But just what is it you, you're doing? Are you um, uh, having something tonight? Are you holding a class tonight? Are you just to put it out there, um, and that will get people's antennas to go up, and hopefully even more members, more people who would want to sign up based on just what it is you're doing. And like when you do the um, the uh, YouTube, every time you put a YouTube out, it'd be good to put. Um, the fact that you, you just put a YouTube out on your class, blah, 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 so people can actually see what's going on. No. And if they're, mm -hmm. if they're hooked in with um, WEBT, then this is going to come up on their, on their Twitter. And, of course, you, you can always search to see what's going on with that. So those are just some ways you can use um, social media to um, help promote WEBT in a very positive way and also help you keep up with what's going on in the street, what's happening. And I'd like to introduce you to our new Thank social you. media. <laughs> 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 uh <-huh. laughs> so, you know, that's just, and the other thing I'm is, I was, uh, <laughs> but I was also wondering, like, okay, you have a, a news feed so that people can also hook into that. So when you put up something on your blog, that can go out to people that you just put a new post on your blog so people will also be brought in to read those posts. Mm -hmm. So that's just another thing that you can do. Um, and I, I happen to like RSS feeds. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's just a personal yeah, thing yeah, with me, right. you know, <laughs> uh, when you're trying to get information okay. fast because so much information is out there now yeah. competing with each other. Yeah. So that's just something I would recommend fast. that, you know, they do that because, um, again, that puts positive vibe out there. Mm -hmm. So that's just my suggestion. Okay. Well, then, we, 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 we laughed at Bob's comment, but we but are looking for folks to help. Well, I, I wasn't laughing. Well, that was, <laughs> we are looking for folks to help maintain and actively be engaged with our social media platform. Yeah. Uh, Lena set my, it up. My passion is set, the back end. Yeah. If it okay. starts breaking, if the blog gets weird, like I'm, I'm still trying to find the right. Uh, I found out that there are some WordPress. Things that can, which is what our, our blog is running on, oh, okay. that it's it's possible to um, have tweets maybe pop up as a pop up when there's an emergency, okay. but I don't quite know how to make that happen. So I'm still investigating back end stuff. Um, I though I have a technology show on WHCR, I don't actively engage with content very well. I'm much better at building the things. What what um, 
Now, something that may assist you with that in terms uh -huh. of the back end. Okay, what what is the platform? Is it the uh, I mean the the uh, language? Is it PHP or? Yeah, but it's WordPress. So it's it's the the back end to WordPress is PHP. And, and, MySQL. and a CSS. And a lot of CSS. Yeah, okay. HTML, CSS, yeah. PHP, and okay. MySQL. Do they have a plugin that will do that for you? Yes. I'm trying to find out which one. It's a very popular CMS um, because it used it used to just be a blogging platform. So it's nice. this very content, content management blogging. system. Yeah. So it's very much into uh, getting your RSS feed out, yes. it being a blog platform. Okay. But it's grown since then. So one of like one of the things we have on our on our web page is um, uh, machine translation, oh, meaning you can yeah. click. And it will just translate it, but it's it's not a great translation. It's kind of a but a, it lets a you machine. know about what what's yeah, going on. Yeah, but you're down. still going to be able to read it. But it, it'll it'll sometimes sound Bottom a little line, funny. But the if whole it's an page, emergency, and we don't have a translator for Spanish. It'll help. You go know. there, and you can get the gist of what we're trying to put up. And you yeah. see, you look, it gets the you tweets. You see, it translated the tweets. Mm -hmm. It translated everything. Mm -hmm. So. That's very, very valuable in an emergency that we can actually give people those kind of options. And it's actually just a free add-on um, or a, a, a tool I was able to get for WordPress to make this happen. Um, so that's there. So I'm I'm very interested in that, and I'm hoping to find more uh, more tools to put on the web page, more more things to get integrated. Um, and one thing that's nice is that doesn't have to happen in an emergency. The stuff that has to happen in an emergency is um, the radio, the tweets, monitoring what people are putting in. Um, what what happened with the explosion illustrates that not every uh, emergency takes out your electrical infrastructure. You still have electricity. We still had internet, and we needed to get the word out about what was happening. Um, so though this, though WHCR EBT came out of um, hurricane and storm emergency awareness. Uh, it's There's a lot of other things that can happen that don't take out the internet, that people are going to be looking on Twitter to see what's going on. And even during Hurricane Sandy, people were tweeting. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's important to know about that is they weren't always tweeting the truth. When, mm -hmm. when he was talking about, um, you want to verify what happened? That's really important because during uh, Sandy, there was this big thing about some hospital that was on fire that was not on fire, mm -hmm. but everybody retweeted because they were like, "Oh, we've got to get the word out." Mm -hmm. But if the word isn't real, <laughs> and this is a problem on the internet in general, people right. just take stuff it's, at their well, word, also never check reality. it out, and just send it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, both, it's both a problem on the internet and also reality. You hear good gossip; it's hard not to yeah, say it to the next right. person without verifying. But, 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 but it's but, worse But it's online. a lot faster online. You can send mm -hmm. it to five hundred people, people without right. checking yeah. it. And, um, they send it to and I, I encourage people personally mm -hmm. to yeah. check things out. That's and if it doesn't come from a weapon, a reputable yeah. website, no, that person may not be dead. Mm -hmm. You know, right. or, or, or they'll put something on that happened it's, it's, ten years ago, right. and yeah. people thinking that it just happened. Right, exactly. It's something that happened ten years ago, and it still is not even complete. By the way, there's a good site called Snopes, mm -hmm. S N O P E S, yeah. that you can mm -hmm. check, and they fact check all these things yeah. and they're pretty good and pretty accurate and mm -hmm. you know we all got at least one friend who doesn't check anything he just yes. blast, <laughs> blast, and blast. so we even have a higher responsibility here you know and so even though the stuff the stuff that goes on the air is FCC mandated but the stuff that doesn't go on the air we have we take it just as seriously because we have a reputation as a trusted news source and so that's something that, you know, as we invite people from the community to participate, we still have to keep the standard up to a news organization level of stand. Mm -hmm. So that there's going to be a day that comes where there's going to be a serious incident, yeah. and we are going to be in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, we're going to perform at a high level, mm -hmm. and people are going to go, mm -hmm. and we're going to go, that's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we appreciate you taking the time to learn these things and to understand exactly why we take the time with a lot of these little things to make sure we keep the standards at a certain certain level so that whatever way people get it, 
they get it a text, they get it on Twitter, they get it over the air, you know, we can we can know that the information is valuable and is trusted. That said, we're not on all social media platforms. Um, there are other ones, and if if you if you think we need to expand to it, um, you have to make a good argument and be willing to support it. Uh, I don't think we should be on Pinterest. Some people think we should be on Pinterest. It, what is that? It's a it's a photo thing that helps get to links. It's not bad. I, I use it for recipes. I don't know how appropriate it, it is for emergencies, but for emergency preparedness, it actually is really good because you can find pictures that link to advice, like how do you pack a go bag. And so there is an argument that we should be in that space, but do we have the support, do we have the interest that does come into question. So right now we're not uh, tweeting every blog post, but seeing as that's an automated thing I need to set up, we will be. <laughs> um, but it, it is still building and growing. Um, but if you if you think we should expand, or if you want to help out more on, on helping get this even more social, even more active, because it is um, it is an issue that if you only if you only speak on social media when there's an emergency, not as many people will be listening to you. Mm -hmm. um, but we are connected to a lot of people who. Like that we are being followed by a lot of people who will be listening to us, so that does who will also retweet. So it, it also depends on your 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 networks in um in in the real world or in the physical world, I guess. The internet's real, it's just not very physical. Um mm -hmm. yeah. the other place we have a presence and people don't think of it as much as social media, but it is, which is YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so these classes, this this class right now is being taped for YouTube. Some of the prior ones, if you need to go back, um, the events we do, our emergency preparedness seminar we did back in um, in September. The entire the entire event is on YouTube. Wally is our YouTube star. He's got a million <laughs> hits, I think. Um, so we, you know, we try to document what we're doing and use YouTube. Um, you're absolutely correct in, you know, we we have to do a better job of taking some of these assets and putting them back out through social media so we can build more awareness. So um, I, I appreciate your comments and, like I said. And your help. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the other thing, just, just to also underscore that point, you know, we're a work in progress, so you all have skills, experience, and strengths that can add to what we're doing. So um, even though we're training, we're learning and training at the same time. That's how we have to, that's how we've accelerated so quickly is that we're always in a learning mode and a training mode at the same time. One of the things we do after every deployment, we do an after action report. You know, and so everybody who is involved gives us their commentary about what went right, what they went wrong. Nobody has any ego about it. It's like uh, the football team on Monday morning, they look at all the film if you drop the ball, it's like, there you go. Run it back. You drop the ball. You know, if you caught the ball, okay, you caught it. But we have to um, look and emphasize what we did right, minimize what we did wrong. There are still things that we haven't fully thought out procedures yet. So in looking at those things, it always gives us an opportunity to rethink procedures. So I say that to say that even though you're training, you have an opportunity to participate. If you see something in the training and you think, well, this actually could be done better this way, you know, please feel free to speak up and participate that because that's what's really going to take us to the next level is that the next level of training should be better than this level and so forth and so on. Every time we have an actual opportunity to do, to do something, we get better and so we try to do trainings and exercises um, but there's going to be something that we haven't prepared for because that's just the nature of the unknown. Mm -hmm. But if we prepare to be prepared, yeah. if we prepare to be flexible, and as we all work together, we have an understanding of who we are and how we work together and how the pieces fit together, we can be flexible enough to handle any situation. Mm -hmm. Wally, you got anything else to add to that? 
I'm 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 in the class. <laughs> I'm in the class. I'm not sitting here just to sit here. I'm learning. I'm learning. I think you should maybe sit up there because okay. we have the camera. Thank you. Um, Stu, did you want to say anything about the text info? Thank you. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Everyone needs to find this sheet and put your name next to a number because that's going to be your number. Oh. Okay. Tonight? No. Forever. No. Forever. We all have a number, and you'll see why. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just asked to uh, talk a little bit, uh, I mentioned about the uh, text platform, something that I think we talked about before. It's a quick refresher. I don't have any slides, but we have a text platform uh, that allows us to send uh, one text to many. That's a way for us to communicate really quickly with a wide audience. We have, but we need folks to join our text group. So you send a uh, text to at 23559. No, I'm sorry. 23559 is the number that you text to. And what you put in the text, the message is at WHCREVT. It's that simple. You get a confirmation text back, and you'll be a member of our group. So that way, we're able to send the text blast to you very simply from one location. We send out our blast, and it hits everybody in our group. So it's the way we want to reach out into, into the community and get folks. Um, in leadership positions and in institutions and organizations all around Harlem to join that uh, text group so that we can communicate in a really in a real time way. This is uh, two three five five two three five five nine. And it's so uh, W E B T at at W H C R E B T. And that is also on on our website, yeah. right on the left edge. It's right there. Subscribe yes. to alerts by texting. Right here. That's the number you text to, and that's the message. <clears throat> I can't see the message because somebody is in front of it. It's at W H C R E B T. And at is the A with the circle around it. Right. So, as, as a lot of you probably know from your own experience, a lot of times, or sometimes, the cell phone service doesn't work. <laughs> But you can still get tested, yeah. So it doesn't take as much bandwidth. That's what I get through. So it's really an important platform. Sometimes the cell service is knocked out, but the text platform still works. So. Yeah, they go. Yeah, yeah. Wherever the X is at. You no, from 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 here down. You can't choose. Oh, you can't. No. <laughs> I think this one. Lucky number, right? <laughs> you okay? You finished? Yes. Okay. Were, there, were there any questions about the social media? Any of the stuff that over? So the hashtag is only in Twitter or in Twitter. You can use it all over the internet. Um, yeah. People know what it means. It searches best in Twitter. I know that it's in Facebook as well. I don't know how well integrated. Yeah. Um, Not as well. Not yeah, as well. You, can, you, you can feel free to use it. Like, don't, I mean, you don't have to go hashtag crazy with anything. Because um, the, the idea is that they'll also, it's also searching the full text search. So it's going to catch both the hashtag and the full text. Is everybody finished? So I text that and then I, I got it. Um, Whatever. What's the challenge? We're not doing any regular yeah. stuff? Yeah. 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 So you yeah. don't have to. Oh, oh you I don't see. You know, the, uh, yeah. that part, but if you want to have a great discussion, you what to do when you first get the radio and, and just really get, get the Chelly app. What's you, the Chelly you, app? You go ahead and talk to Doug about it. Is that an app for. Um, I'm saying right now. No need. You don't need the app. It's all it all runs on text. That is the platform it runs on. And if you want to have a discussion, that's a great first time. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, we take about a two minute break. Give me a chance to set up here. Two <laughs> 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 Move forward. I just wish this temperature would get itself together. Yeah, right? It's killing me. That's when it's all coming out, man. That's not what it's too much. 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 Right, keep walking down the hall before you walk out into the big hall. Oh, you're in there. Oh, right. Yeah, all 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 What is this? Do you have a number? Um, no, you saw about the ID number. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I guess not. You, you sent me something, but. No, you would have had to sign it yourself. Okay, great. All right. So, any, any one of those vacant spots there? Oh, somebody gave me. <laughs> 1037. Somebody gave me. Well, then that's your number. That's my number, I guess. Oh, that was because we had to move along with you. Right, right. Gotcha. 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 Okay. How you doing? Good to see and we're still human first, okay? Yeah. If you double people down, you can cover them 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 down, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 I, I met you at the party at the, the ground phone that I'm coming down. And uh, remember the three of you? I used to work at the ground phone. Yeah, they changed it now. They have a different name. Yeah. Same owner. Uh, same owner? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, Adrian has a sign of it, but she forgot it. So I'm going to guy in the number to bring it in on Tuesday. So I'll just hold this so we don't get lost. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
I go to YouTube for everything. Look, YouTube, I said there's no reason why I can see you broke. Well, you didn't need to go that quickly, right? Yeah. Type of thing. Well, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to take the sheet. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I spend this money and they send me thousands of pieces of information. And then I went to them and said, just go to their, their site and put unfriend. But, I mean, I think you don't even care about them. Um, 803. 803. What time is this note supposed to come tonight? I don't really think we're going to be calling them. Yeah. Not from what I've seen. I mean, New York so. is being shielded. What? Shielded? The word shielded because we haven't gotten that much. Compared to other well, for the last couple of storms. Compared to other places. We haven't no, we got off here. So we had it, but not like a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> You got to know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You, you want some more? Yeah. Like no, I'm ready to move to a Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to move down south. Huh? They got snow down there. Yeah. But this is your, uh, where's your email? They got, oh, one guy, he was saying, hey, uh, I didn't use my phone anymore. I'm going to email. You can email me. That's amazing. You can email me. I'm going to down in Maryland. I think last week they had to fix the agents in this one. We didn't get these folks to talk to that last week, but we can talk whenever it was supposed to know the last time. They claim it got like six days. But you're right, they said we're not going to get that much this time. Yeah. Maybe they said, they said the fish going to get a lot of We're going to get that wind tomorrow, real quick. That's what they did say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say you got a window. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. You know we missed it in the summer. We had it. I'm good. I'm class. Well, actually, I missed it yesterday because I worked. With the, what's that? Um, um, the Harvest. I'm going to make it up. You go to another class and make it up. No, because that class is behind schedule. So I can't just hardly. Oh, you can't make it up. It's not really. Unless the date, like they gave a schedule of dates, but I was like this week for next week's class. So like right. I know I couldn't go Monday. I can take something this week. Uh, Push. But there was no makeup for the last night. Did you do her right now? Right now. Right. She was canned. It was about was four, quarter to six. Um, I mean, quarter to seven. That was a week. This is a class. That's her. I'm not. I'm not sure how to get there. Huh? In your about the rich lady yes. who stayed in the hospital? No, about that guy had a uh, near-death experience. Tell us the audio show. Okay. Okay, so anyway, I'm sorry. We're going to move along because um, we don't want to get caught in the snow, even though we're emergency people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next next uh, week, we're going to set up, and we're going to try to have a simulation here. But what we want to do is take the simulation to a point where we actually are on the air. Everybody gets a chance to be on the air. So um, we're just trying to put that together. Um, I, I'll say this. I was going to lead into this with this, but now's a good time. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we want to try to plan something for next week because when it comes time to go on the air we're not going to tell the people that there's an explosion or there's a fire or this that even though we're doing that in here so what are we going to do um when we go on the air so Jaylee is the, the uh, producer of the shows that's going to be on the air and she's trying to get this together so Hi. So, um, basically, I have. Um, I have two hours. Um, Audrey has given us her, her time slot, which is from six to seven. So you all are invited to come an hour earlier. And then my time slot is from seven to eight. That's two hours worth of information and opportunity for you all to get on the mic 
and familiarize yourself with it. Um, but two hours is a long time on here, mm -hmm. especially when we're talking fast. So I need candidates who are in cert to um, interview, to give me ideas of maybe some topics that we should share with the community so that I can start piecing together our program. So does anyone want to volunteer, have any ideas, suggestions, people that I should hunt down in the next week? Well, Jolena, I think like it'd be an opportunity for you to promote the team. And I'm just going to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good for that. Mm -hmm. um, so you, um, you're part of Harlem, sir? No. Okay. So um, say some of the things that I was thinking about, uh, just you know, in terms of informing the community would be like maybe how to pack a go bag. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, safety in the household. Mm -hmm. You know, we could even do a little piece on, you know, pet safety, fire safety, you know, checking your carbon monoxide detectors. But um, we, the UDT, don't want to um, overstep our boundaries or speak of things that may not really be under all of what we do, but just um, WHCR as a whole is about educating the community anyway. So. Everything that's informative, I do want to include into that, but I also want to have my um, informed and certified people in place. Really? Um, you, you might want to, uh, you might want to know, uh, like across the street is the, uh, the shelter. Okay. You know, uh, you might want to, you know, talk a little bit about the different locations within the within the area okay. uh, that we broadcast. Especially in homes, you know, that have shelters and uh, uh, Salvation Army, etc. You know, places that, that you can go to in case of emergency. Uh, you know, go to to your local church even on the corner and find out what you know what they do, or they might be able to put you in touch with something. But those are shelters are fluid, though. Yeah, they're not definite. They're not. That's what happened with um, okay the hurricane in New Orleans. Everybody ran to oh, okay. the sewer. Yeah, that wasn't a shelter. Right. So this supposedly is a, it's a possible shelter, but it might not necessarily be. You're talking about the one across the street. Yeah, there's a shelter okay. across the street for me. But there are many locations. But it might not yeah. necessarily be a shelter. Got you. But there are many locations. Three, it's not going to be a shelter. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are many locations yeah. where there are that that you know probably I mean schools and stuff like that. I mean. I mean, I'm thinking of places that you can go to. Probably, you know, they might be fluid, but they'll be set up to direct you and at least give you direction. You well, I'll give you an example: the be, Harlem Temple. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just, I'm just making it real quick because we, we want to move it along. The Harlem Temple is in a hurricane zone. It's in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. So it's a shelter now, yeah, but we got a hurricane three. It's right. not a shelter. Well, yeah, I was it's going to do a. It's under the water. Okay. Okay. So, sort like, even a, the flood zones, that needs to right. be a, a topic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, a, that's I have a, that. Yeah. I okay. Kind of. Like a, a, is the Harlem two minutes? Is the is the um, shirt two minutes still running? No, no, it's okay. not. Not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna so definitely do kind of it. like a in between the whole time. Did you know? And kind of throw in statistics because mm -hmm. sometimes that helps. But how long are you gonna talk? No, like I, I need to know. No more than five minutes. Okay, because I'm a speaker, so I need to know. Well, I mean, we can we can talk about it after mm -hmm. here. I'll, you can email me. But yeah, like everything, even if it was more, maybe it'll be two five minute segments. But okay. we never want to just keep on talking because they're gonna stop listening. Exactly. So we'll take our little mm -hmm. breaks, play some music, get mm -hmm. back onto it. Did you know that Harlem happens to have this many shelters? However, did you also know that, you know, many of our locations are in flood zones? Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can talk about cooling stations, go bags, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So if anyone has any ideas, anything pops into mind, uh, please feel free to keep me right. at the website. You can promote the school, the, the search class. Right. Mm -hmm. Say a few words about that. Okay. 
Well, what about um, how more people can get involved in spawning for that first yard? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I want to actually ask you about that, but that's something like we don't do, we don't do that class, like we were going to do it with the um, FDNY. So I'm actually going to kind of research those little things even, you know, there's some people that might be in need of a carbon monoxide detector. Well, everyone should have one, but there might be people who don't, and I believe, and I'm just going to verify my facts, that you can get one from the firehouse. I think at one point they were giving them for free. They gave them out already. They gave them out already. They give them out, you know, they just pay for, they want you to change them, spring up, fall okay. back, and they give them out just before them. Unless they give a special presentation to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the foundation does that. The firehouse does it, the foundation does Because the firehouse is under the city, and the city's not allowed to give out free. Okay. Thanks, and everyone signed in. And was this the foundation? Really, mm -hmm. you scratched out forty-two. Someone scratched out forty-two now, so that forty-two is free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like we said, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So um, if you remember when we talked about the incident command system, we have a planning section. So why would we have a planning section? Because we need to plan everything that we're going to do, even if it's a, a quick plan. Um, and even if we gotta, you know, make it make it in two or three minutes before you make a move, you gotta make some kind of plan. You just don't start functioning. So um, I just want to go over uh, uh, a few pointers in uh, public safety event or incident planning. There are many similarities between an event and a disaster. In both cases, many people show up at a given time and location needing food, water, shelter, and instruction. The main difference between the two is that one is planned and the other one isn't. Sometimes public service events are characterized as a planned catastrophe in that they both involve large numbers of people and a great deal of chaos. Making a plan. How many stations are necessary? These are some of the things uh, as as far as communicators. So you, could, um, you know, whatever you you're into, you need to make a plan. If you're a fireman, you're gonna make a plan on how you're gonna attack this fire. If you're a policeman, and you're gonna make a plan on how you're gonna catch this criminal, or whatever you in. So, as communicators, these are some of the things that we need to know. How many stations are necessary for the event? In other words, you're going to have an event. Where are you going to post your, 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 right now we're talking about radios. So how many do you need? How big an event is this? Where will these stations be located? Okay, that's important because sometimes, especially like using radio, sometimes you've got dead spots in different areas. I don't care how good your radio is. This, if there's a, a, a concrete, steel, lead building between you and where you're trying to talk to, you're not going to talk to it. So this is what you got to know. What capabilities or modes of communi communications will be needed? Okay, so you need to know what you need. You need radio, you need telephone, video stream, you know, um, what's that, portables, portable radios, repeater, etc. So you need to know what what you need because if it's going to be a long, it's a, let's say if it's, it's something that's going to take up a, a large area, then you're going to need a repeat. In other words, if you're going to your if the event or the incident takes up the whole of Harlem, 
uh, uh, handheld radio a simplex, which we went over last week, from which means from one radio directly to the next radio will not work. So you need to know what what, what kind of area you're going to be in, what type of station is needed for each task. Okay, so depending on what people are doing, it de that determines what what you need. Um, is the station going to be fixed? Is it going to be an automobile, pedestrian, bicycle, aerial, etc.? All of these are the things that you have to be thought about during the event. Uh, dura excuse me, duration of the event. How long is the event? You have volunteer deployment, WHCR airtime. You know, whatever. All of this has to be kind of figured out in advance. Do you have an assignment and you know, your roster. So this is just, like I said, just a few of the things, uh, some some of the points that uh, you need to think about when we are deploying for some kind of event or incident. Okay, another, moving, moving forward, a site survey. Safety first for all considerations and, and situations. Ah, didn't we say that in the very first thing? So you, you, you're going to to a, to a situation where there's going to be event or a incident. If safety is not safety is on the top. For example, when they had the gas explosion, people from our team were going to go over to the building. And we were advised not to go because the air quality wasn't good over there. So that was safety first, you know. So rather than get the story and all of that, yaddy, 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 safety first. Find out, know where the emergency services are located and how to reach them. So if we're going into um, a particular area, we need to know where all of the services are. Where's the hospital? Where's the closest hospital? Where's the closest firehouse? Where's the closest police station? Where all of these things we need to uh, investigate. What the available power sources do you have? Okay, um, permission and access to any necessary a area. You got to get into some private property. You got to deal with that long before the, the event comes about. You gotta, you know, see the, the owner and get the permission and, and whatever it takes. Type and amount of electrical power needed. Just because uh, an, an extension cord may not do it. Uh, some of these, uh, some of these uh, DJs that have these big equipments. One time we were doing a a a, a remote outside of Harlem Hospital. And they blew out the whole. <laughs> panel with, with, with their equipment. So you got to know what, what kind of power you need to, to run what you need. Location where WHCR leadership can monitor as much of the activity as possible. What are we talking about? We're talking about a command post. And we always say the command post is not in the middle of the activity or the event. It's got to be back off from it in a safe location, but close enough that it can be that it can m observe what's going on. Yes, Just a quick question: um, Does uh, EDT have phone van? We hope to, but uh, at this point in time, we barely. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. What you see is what they get. Right. Um. Do you need a field command post? Well, you need to know that. Propagation test must be made at the time of day the event takes place. What's a propagation test? Uh, especially for long distances, uh, your radio waves are affected by the weather. If you ever notice, uh, if you have satellite TV and it rains, you lose your satellite. Okay, so that's just a, like an indication. Another thing, um, like like now, let's say from here 
down to um, Expo Avenue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm I'm saying that specifically because it's going straight down the hill, St. Nicholas, Edgecombe Avenue. You got a good radio signal, and then come June and July, all of a sudden my radio don't work. What happened? The trees don't grow up mm. and blocking the city. Wow. So these are things you can't take none of this stuff for granted. You gotta always be um, testing. Uh, well, I'll get into that a little later, but we, we got a few radios, and that's what we're doing now. It's constantly testing them from where wherever we are. Type of antennas necessary, cell phone coverage, WACR coverage, uh, Wi-Fi, or Internet accessibility. These are things that you got to check for. Do you need tables, chairs, water, power, tents, headphones, printer, copier, etc.? Coordination frequencies, network and frequency bands to be used. Okay, so um, our radio has our uh, locked in frequencies that we, we use, that we are allowed to use. But in certain cases, if something big happens and they, um, we have to work with other people on other radios, all these frequencies have to be coordinated so that people are not stepping on each other. When they say step on them, you're talking and then somebody else comes in and squashes what you're saying. So your message, up. neither one of you get through. Okay? Uh, be aware of FCC regulations that must be followed. We're going to go over a few of those a little later. Resources needed. Volunteers, communications equipment, food and water, information, maps, charts, instructions, safety equipment, tools, etc. So these are some of the things that, those are some of the things that uh, we need to think about as far as planning for a communication event. Like I said, each, depending on what, you, what you're doing, has its own uh, list of things that you need to follow. What we just went through is a fairly good list for a public safety communications event or incident. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is communications and information management concepts and principles. Um, NIMS, we talked about that up way up front. The National Incident Management System. We, I'm not going into that. We're supposed to know that at this point. If you don't know, please go over your things. What that is is the presidential order uh, to, to get all of this emergency stuff up and running and in a coordinated fashion nationwide. Identifies the following main concepts and principles underlying an effective communication and information management system. So that's really what we're into. Um, okay, these are, these are some of the things that you got to have. The, con the principles are you got to have a common operating picture. Everybody that's involved in it, being that we are, we are the communicators. We are getting the word out, whether we're getting the word out to the public or whether we're getting the word out to other first responders, wherever the word is going out, we have to be make sure that we're not telling this group one thing and that group another. It's got to be a common operating picture. You got to have interoperability, and then you got to have reliability, scalability, portability, and resiliency and redundancy. I every time resort back to my fourth grade. <laughs> Okay, just yeah, we, we, that's why I just kind of went faster. A common operating picture, having common pictures during an incident helps to ensure consistency of all emergency management response personnel engaged in an incident. Um, and I'm saying this because we're mostly talking about putting stuff over WHCR, but like I said before, um, the, the, the Tom, Tommy group 
they and that that's what they were supposed to be doing and they ended up being the OEM in other words all of the first responders were coming through them to get the information out from Rockaway so we don't know what our circumstances are going to be so we need to be able to um, function as a emergency operating center for for first responders if it's necessary okay interoperability <laughs> okay. okay communications interoperability they had to put it back again allows key decision makers to communicate within and across agencies and jurisdiction via voice data or video in real time when needed and when authorized. What they're saying, and it's still not that way, one of the big problems of 9-11 was that the police could not talk with the fire department. And guess what? They still can't. They still can't? No. Nope. Still can't. Out there where, I, where I'm at is one of the few places that they have a switch there that they can turn from the police radio to the fire radio and everything that they can talk back and forth. But normally they can't talk to each other. All right? And that is a real problem because they, they, they cited a lot of people got killed because of that. Okay? So um, what we, 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 what we want to do, we don't want to get caught in the traps that are already laid out. So part of what we're going to be doing is making sure that whoever we're working with, we have a, a, a way of transferring the communication from one level to the next. And like I said, we're not just about giving it to the public. We, we got to be able to work within the system because we are like have stepped from just being preparedness to into the response area. So that means that now you, you're functioning when the action is happening. And so we got to know what to do. Reliability, scalability, and portability. A flexible communications and information system can function in any type of incident, regardless of the size, the co of course, size, location, or complexity. Flex flex flexibility is derived from, OK, um, before I go there. Um, the reliability, well, they, they probably explain it. What am I? <laughs> <laughs> reliability, okay. Uh, able to function in the, in the context of any incident in which emergency management response personnel would be expected to respond to. So, whatever the equipment that we're using, um, our our supplies, um, everything that we're using, we need to make sure that we have good quality and 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 uh, strong. Uh, uh, if it's a, like a case or something, you don't want to have a thousand dollar radio in a ten dollar case. You understand? And and in these circumstances, you don't know you're moving fast, and you know you snatch up something and it rips, and that's it. Okay, scalability, able to accommodate increasing numbers of users mm -hmm. on a system. So, in other words, if, we, if we're if we working, started out with five people and then all of a sudden expands to 25 people, we need to be able to um, uh, be able to work with the 25 people. Mm -hmm. And then our equipment, if it comes back down to five people, then able to bring all of our supplies down to the five people. And our system, it's not just having, let's say, the radios, but the radios have to be able to function with 25 people. That's what we're talking about when we talk about scalability. Okay? And portable, able to facilitate the interaction of systems that are normally this thing. For example, the use of a standardized assignment of a radio channels across jurisdiction allows responders to participate in a incident outside of their jurisdiction and still use familiar equipment. So, in other words, 
if we part of our plan, and this goes back to the other section where it said frequency coordination. So if we know, and this is a part of our plan, immediate plan, not too distant, that we're going to be want to be working with Harlem Hospital. We're going to be working with public safety in the college. We're going to be working with the facilities department of the college. Now we have we have um, we have channels on our radios, but we may have to add channels, or they may have to add channels to their radio so that we we're not waiting until the date something happens and then we're trying to figure out how we're going to get in contact with it. And then not only that, but uh, plan A means use channel one. Plan B means channel two. So you get up somewhere and plan B comes, you know what channel to switch to. So all of this is part of the plan and all of this is your, your equipment has to be able to do this kind of stuff. Resiliency. Communication systems should be built to withstand and continue to perform after damage to a loss or a to, to or loss of infrastructure. Example of resiliency practices include hardening, hardening dispatch centers, transmission systems of infrastructure to withstand known risks, and equipping repeater antenna sites with independent power systems to ensure their continued function during power failure. That is one of our key things. We we have our repeater on top this roof. We plan on moving it across the street on a higher roof. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we want to um, get our backup power so that should we lose power in the city, our radio still work. And then what does that mean? That also means that us as individuals have to start thinking about our own premises where we are. Mm -hmm. So what? So now we got a repeater that's got backup power. You've got a radio. you got to have to have a way to charge your radio where you are. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now this this is taking you into another uh, in, uh, environment. That's not environment, but another mode mm -hmm. of, 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 of uh, emergency preparedness. Right. You got to start looking in, in 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 your in your personal situation how you can get emergency power, mm -hmm. you know. And things like this, what we want to do here is, um, you know, try to come together and maybe find grants and stuff that will, you know, uh, you know, get help to get all of us that kind of stuff. Redundancy preserves the ability to communicate when standard capabilities suffer damage. Question. Yes, sir. If I were based and I'm in a location and uh, say I can't get emergency power, say the power goes out in my area, is there a backup base or how, do, how does that happen? This is what we got to plan. This is the, see, everybody got to realize, you know, this is, this is the ground floor. I mean, actually, this is the hole in the ground. You understand? You know, this is the foundation. So all of these questions that you asked, they like there were some questions like when we first started, and people would ask some questions. I said, hold on to the question, but don't forget it. Don't, don't, don't let that question go out of your mind because there's going to be a time when we're ready for that question. You know. What in other words, let's say if we got a grant to get equipment, you understand? So now we come to the group and we say, okay, let's put our heads together and see what's the what priorities we need. So now your question that you're asking now has a place that really fits. You understand what I'm saying? So um, and on your own, which you you need to kind of be investigating these things. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they, what happened with the, um, they had a big solar power thing going on over here, experiment. That was like a top secret nothing. I know. And then they... Then it just disappeared. Okay. It went out, the same way it came, yeah. it just vanished. Okay. So and then they it. took one of our things with them. Uh-oh. What thing? We had a solar panel up too, and it disappeared. Anyway, never mind. Wow. Okay. This may be achieved through duplication of identical services or, or providing diverse alternative communication methods. So what they're saying is, okay, okay, we got our repeater up here. Guess what? We need a repeater someplace else. You understand? Actually, we need a whole system. Even though we build up this place here and everything is good, someplace else we got to be functional. So this is this is part of the plan. So that's the hardening of the infrastructure. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, federal um, all of these things as time goes on and we advance, you know, uh, we'll get deeper into them. And then as we are doing things, um, we'll refer back to this and you'll see, oh, this is what you're talking about. Because right now it's just words and whatnot. But it actually all this stuff fits. Okay, federal registry. Reason why we're going here is because okay, so you learn how to drive your car. You understand? You, you know how to fix your car, and you know all the lights and everything. You know you stop at the red light to let a guy go by and this, that, and the other. But if you don't know them traffic laws, you're gonna get in trouble out there. So that's what we have. We have a radio, I think um, uh, Bob Lean, he mentioned FCC early on and so this is where those are the policemen of the airways of communication. Not just the airways, communications in the United States, period. Anything that's got to do with communication, they are the law makers and the law enforcement of it, okay? So this is why we're getting into the federal registry. The, the, the federal registry is like a, a, a weekly journal that the United States puts out that the Office of the Federal informs citizens of their rights and obligations, documents, the actions of the federal agencies, and provides a forum for public participation in, in the democratic process. Our publications provide access to a wide range of federal benefits and opportunities for funding and contain comprehensive information about various activities of the United States government. In addition, we administer the Electoral College for the presidential elections and constitutional amendments. Now, I'm glad I did that because that part where it says our, public, our publications provide access to a wide range of federal benefits and opportunities for funding. I ain't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to be looking at the federal registry. Mm -hmm. The federal registry is updated daily uh, by 6 a.m. and is published Monday through Friday except for holidays consisting of four types. Presidential documents, including executive orders, proclamations, rules, regulations, including po policies. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. These are all the things that's in there. So that okay. should be updated. So all of that's in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Code of federal re regulations. That's the reason. The reason why I talked about the federal registry. The codification of the general and permanent rules published in the Federal Registry by the executive departments and agencies of the federal government. So, the Code of Federal Regulations. These are all the federal laws and they are constantly updating them and changing them and whatever they're doing, all that other yaddy yaddy that we talked about in the previous slides, um, when it comes to law, it, it's, it's, if it's a law, it comes under the code of federal, federal regulations. 
Let's see if how I go back. Okay. This is a list of 50 uh, categories going all the way through. And if we, as you go through this list, I don't think you'll find room for anything that left out. There's something there for everything. Okay, these are all the way up to 39. Okay, now the one that I have in bold is the one that we're interested in telecommunications, also known as FCC rules, administered, administered by the Federal Communications Commission. So the, 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 the laws, the communication laws are actual laws. They're not just policies. Okay. Title 47, Code 47 of the Federal Regulations. So they say Title 47, but that means that was the 47th one in that list. Okay. Okay. So you got the code. That's what they call CFRs. The Code of Federal Regulations is broken down into 50 chapters. That's the list that we saw. CFR 47 is the one for telecommunications, and that's broken into four subchapters, A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And the subchapters are broken into parts. <laughs> okay. Now, these are... How I get to part B before I get to part A? Um, all right, this is subchapter B. We're going to end up going um, to to our uh, commercial. But these are the different types of of communications. When they say common communication carriers, commercial mobile radio services, public mobile radio services, satellite communications, all of these come under this um, area. Even the tariffs are not clear to me. I don't know if that's regular tariffs or tariffs for communications. I'm not quite familiar with that. But um, you can see this is more like a commercial type situation, common carrier. Um, what is going on? Oh, this is subchapter. Okay, now we're back to A. All right, so subchapter A is just general stuff. Just basically kind of explains uh, different terminologies and all that kind of stuff. And all of this stuff is on the internet if anybody really can't sleep at night. <laughs> okay. Okay. 47 feet, part 73 mm -hmm. is for in here and in there, Ra radio broadcast services. What parts? So their laws for the broadcast stations is in part 73. Private land mobile services is, is what we're dealing with. And then we're also down the road are going to deal with amateur radio. Okay. Federal Communications is an agency of the United States government. FCC is formed by the Communications Act of 1934. Communication regulates all wireless and wired communications. FCC regulations are part of the Code of Federal Reg Regulations. FCC regulates. To all part 47. You said all that already. Okay, so one of the main things that I want everybody to be aware of that willful or malicious interference, um, no person shall willfully or maliciously interfere or cause interference to any radio communications of any station licensed or authorized by or under the act or operated by the United States government. Okay, so we we are operating a station that is authorized by the United States government. So that means that it's unlawful for people to 
uh, do anything to interfere with the communications across that. Okay? So it's not just, you know, you know, that's not a nice thing to do. It's like, you know, this this is somebody the this is an example of what can happen. All right? Section 501 at present provides that the violations of any of the provisions of the Communications Act shall be punishable by a fine of $10,000. So, I mean, just fooling around on the radio, that's a heavy fool around. And not more than two years in jail. So, they give you one year and 360 days. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that would kind of put a hiccup in our lifestyle. So, um, I'm just, I put this here because, and I'm not saying anybody in here, but people need to know that this is a serious situation. And so they want a question. Does this apply to not just radio broadcasts, but like the handheld radio, the other radio communication, or any, all radio any, regulation? Any, any station that has that's licensed okay. by the federal government, mm -hmm. that's what it applies to. Any station. <laughs> so it can be those, mm -hmm. and those carry very <laughs> heavy fines. Mm -hmm. Like $100,000 and all kind of crazy money. But the handhelds are licensed by the FCC too as well, are they not? Well, the, 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 like the handhelds that you get in um, Radio Shack and stuff like that, those, those are not like a, 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 a you don't actually license that. Okay. That's a, like an open mm -hmm. license. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I just want to go over amateur radio. A lot of people ask what amateur radio is. Amateur, the popular yeah. hobby and service in which licensed amateur operators hams, sometimes called hams, operate communications equipment. Although amateur radio operators get involved for many reasons, they all have a common basic knowledge of radio technology and operating principles and pass examinations for the FCC license to operate on a radio frequency known as the amateur band. These bands are radio frequencies reserved by the Federal Communications FCC for use by ham radio operators only. So, um, basically, what this is saying is this: you, this is a service. They, the different things that, the different categories of types of radios from the FCC are called different services. And so, this is a service for civilians that really are interested in radio, and uh, and. Uh, I shouldn't say radio communications because ham radio, much of the innovation in commercial and military comes from ham radio. So these guys be home coming up with all kind of stuff, you know. So um, one of the reasons why I have it here is because um, any place that there's a serious, serious, serious um, disaster. Usually, the first communications that come out of there is ham radio. So, um, because they 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 practice what we're trying to get into now. They practice that on a regular basis. They got different kinds of groups. Um, um, I guess all of this is relevant. I mean, it's all relevant. You can read it all on your, your time. But they have a group in which um, we're, we're going to be part of that amateur radio emergency services. Anyone that went to the uh, summit that we had, the, the Latino brother that was up there speaking, he was the head of the Bronx for the amateur radio emergency services in the Bronx. Um, I'm, a, I'm a part of that, but we're going to put this whole thing in that once we, you know, we get to a certain level. And as you'll see here, I want you ready to recognize 
as a resource for national release organizations. Many national national organizations have formal agreements with amateur radio emergency services and other radio amateur radio groups. Now this is a list of some of the, the people, some of the different um, people that use amateur radio. Um, and uh, I don't even see the Red Cross up there, but here in New York, Red Cross, they are they're on the top of the list. Um, so if we're talking about being into emergency communications, we cannot ignore amateur radio. That's the bottom line. Um, I started um, in the last class um, teaching it, but it, it, it's it's quite involved, and I think it, you know it's. I mean, like now everybody's ready to go now. Going through sitting now to start an amateur class, it's too much. So we got to figure out a way to fit the amateur class in as we go along. Okay, now this is the procedures that we are starting out with on a repeater network, all calls go to EBT base. Okay, we have a repeater, we have a few radios out, and so as time goes on, probably everybody in here will get a radio, and so this is how we function. You gotta have order on the radio, you gotta have order or else it's just going to be chaos, You're just wasting your time. So in order to have order, and, and basically that's why we're going through these classes so that we know what to do. We don't want to have anybody on our network that don't, didn't take the classes because then they'll just be messing up the whole thing. On, on, on the repeater network, all calls go to EBT base. EBT base, like we discussed earlier, is 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 the control operator. Okay, he may be here, may not be here, but he's the person. So even if you want to talk to me, you go to EBT base and ask, uh, "Is am I on the air?" And then he'll call, "Are you on the air?" And he, and I say, "Yes, I'm on the air," and then we can talk. But the the, the main thing is that. The control operator, which is EBT base, controls who's talking. Okay? Right. If there's no answer from EBT base, then calls go direct to any station or a specific station. So if I wanted a radio check and um, I said EBT base, this is mobile 10, uh, mobile 4 for a radio check, and nobody answered, then I could go, if I know that uh, Mobile 10 is on the air, I can go then Mobile 10, this is Mobile 4 for a radio check. But you got to go through EBT base first, all right? Or you could uh, actually say if any station. You don't know who's out there. You don't know who's listening. So you say any station, any station, this is Mobile 4 for a radio check. And then somebody could come back to you like that, okay? Okay, you're doing a radio check, okay, and I want to know if I have information to, to relay, do I relay right, it wait, today? Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. We're just talking about a radio check. Right, right, okay. All right? All right. All right. R radio calling in. Now, now, this is something I want to do tonight. Quickly try to go through it. Um, the radio calling in, EBT base, this is mobile unit number. Everybody know what your number is? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to say your number and EBT base dispatcher. Somebody in here is going to be the base dispatcher, going to go outside the door and be the base dispatcher. Um, this is EBT base. Proceed or go ahead. In other words, I called you. Now the base says, go ahead. I hear you. Go ahead. And then, then the, the radio calling say, can I have a radio check? And EBT base dispatcher will say, I, I hear you loud and clear, how do you hear me? And the guy calling in or person calling in, excuse me, ladies, I hear you loud and clear. EBT base dispatcher says, what is your location? Give any kind of location. Um, 
I'm, that's here. But I mean, yeah, if you're right. out there, you give where you are. Mm -hmm. And the radio calling in, give the location, the avenue, and the cross streets, not not your house and apartment number. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. The last person to and and remember, at the end of each each sentence, you say "k," right. and that no, that lets me know that now it's time for me to talk. Right. Okay. Okay. When you get down to the last person to talk should be the dispatcher. And so the last, he could say something like, thank you, and give the time, and then say, I'm dispatcher, and give your number. All right? And just give the last two numbers. You don't have to give all four numbers. Okay, let me get another radio. You got another, you got radio? Yeah. Okay. One of y'all, somebody go outside. You actually go outside. You Okay. UEBT base, but hold on so that you. It's on here, right? Yes. No, no, it's not on here. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh. That kind of summarizes some of what's up, uh, yeah, yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah. You're going to be posting that, right? I, I, yes, but I can give you a, I got copies here. Everybody can have a copy. <clears throat> It'll make more sense once you have radio in your hand. Thank but. you. This is what we're going to say. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Somebody else got a radio? Okay. Turn it on. Okay. Yeah, that's this is my radio. Yeah, that's the one that was up yeah. there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you got it. Okay. Oh, oh, you want it. Right. 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 Look, at the, look at the radio. You know how to operate it? <laughs> uh, I'm losing it. That's right. When you do that, it's on. Right, right. It's on. It's on. Yeah. Right? So on board. Board. That's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. Right now, we're going to. We're going to pass one. All right. Okay. All right. And this change the channel. All right. So we're going to pass one. All right. Pass one. All right. Okay. All right. Now here's the paper. After we go through the first one, everybody will get to this. Even though it's right in front of you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're the calling in. You're calling in. Who has to leave? They come in again. Okay. Let let them go. Oh, thanks. This is you. This is you calling in. Every place where it says calling in is what you say. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. it's out. I don't know okay. where. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Radio, radio calling in. So, right. Hold on while you talk. Release it to listen. Hello? No. <laughs> EBT base. This is mobile number. In your number. EBT base. This is unit 39. Okay. Press the button. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. You got to hold the button the whole time you're talking. Gotcha. Yes. And then release it when you so, start. This is uh, mobile unit 39. Okay. Can I have a radio check, Kay? Hear you loud and clear. How, how do you hear me, Kay? I hear you loud and clear, Kay. This is your location, Kay. 160 Compton Avenue, Kay. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Nineteen hundred. My ID number is forty-one. Okay. Thank you. Wait a minute. Hold on. You, you're going outside. <laughs> and you're the dispatcher. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. Good right? You're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. You know what to read? Yeah. No. You know what to read? Yeah. Oh, I have the paper. Everybody has to. Let it go. I'm the 
Let it go. EVP base centers mobile unit 38K. This is EVP base. Proceed or go ahead, K. Can I have a radio check? K. I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me, K? I hear you loud and clear, K. What is your location, K? 138th and Convent, K. Thank you. The time is 19.20, K. She didn't get a vision. 19.20, dispatcher, 39. Okay. You don't put K in the end because you don't want you don't want the next thing to do or talk to you. Yeah, that's the radio. Okay. Sorry, we gotta leave. So you know. Oh, oh you got it. Okay. Okay, I think he's ready. Good Okay, thank you. This is EV base. Receive or go ahead, K. Can I have a radio check, K? I hear you loud and clear. How do you read? How do you hear me, K? I hear you loud and clear, K. What is your location, K? 160 Carmen Road, uh, Amsterdam Avenue. K. Finish up when you get down to the bottom. There's no K because K right. means that you're waiting for somebody to come back. To you. Oh, okay. you understand? And when you say this, there's two, two things that everybody's doing. It's, you could either say proceed or you could say go ahead. Not both. You don't need to say both. Right. Okay, next question. EVT base, this is mobile unit 1043. Okay. This is EVT base, proceed. Can I have a radio check, okay? Hear you loud and clear, okay? Do you hear me, okay? I hear you loud and clear, okay? What is your location, okay? 145th Street, Common Avenue, okay? Thank you. The time is 19, 1920. Okay, dispatcher ID is 1044. Okay. And no, no okay at the end. Does it sign off or they just, after they just say the number and that's it? Right. The, the, the way that they the, the way they that they do it is the dispatch. You know, where they say thank you. Time is now 1920. Dispatcher 04. Okay. Boom. Oh, and okay. that's oh, it. Thank okay. you. Am I my dispatch ID? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever your unit number that that's it. So you know, because the dispatch might change. Right. 
according to the time of day or what, what day of the week or whatever. You always identify. Right. So you always who always gotcha. the number stays with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you say that? Okay. What is your location, K? 157 and Frederick Douglass Boulevard. K. Thank you. The time is 1940 hours. Dispatcher, uh, 37. Sign off. Yes. Sign off again. Sign off K? No, no K at the end. Because the K means that you're waiting for somebody to come back. Thank you. So I will sign off with. No. Only this batch of signs. Oh, that's what I'm saying. The batch of signs. You don't have to come back. Okay. You don't have to come back. Oh, I'm just passing on. Go on. Okay. Go ahead. Please go ahead. I'll be this. Yeah. Come down. EBT basis mobile unit 37 K. This is EBT base. Proceed, K. Can I have a radio check, K? I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me, K? I hear you loud and clear, K. What is your location, K? Uh, 137th and uh, Amsterdam, okay? Thank you. The, the time is 1920. Dispatch of 10, 10.43. Anybody didn't? Everybody did this side? Yeah. You did this side? Uh -huh. You did this side? <laughs> I'll do it. 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 i I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, okay? What is your location? 145th Common Avenue, okay? Thank you. It is now 19, 1940. Um, dispatcher, 10.50. Everybody did it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, to answer your question, um, a lot of times when we first started doing this, everybody would get on the, on the air and they'd say, EBT base, can I have a radio check? That's not the way to go. You need to call EBT base. If I if I want to ask you something, I don't say Lillian, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I say Lillian, and then you say yes, and then I ask you the question. So if you... Um, are calling for another reason beside a radio check, you just go EBT base, and then I say, this is EBT base, proceed, and then I have some information on XYZ, and then I'm supposed to actually repeat what you said, so to make sure that I got it right. Okay. And So there should be nothing in the first message other than who you are. Yeah. In other words, nothing. Base, this is so and so. Boom. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then right. from there, then you you build your your. Okay, when you say yeah. go ahead. You, right. You say what you're gonna say. Right. And then when you sign off, or what? Like I said, everybody's saying proceed or go ahead. You know, it's, it's either proceed or go ahead. You don't have to say both of them. Right. You know, you can just say proceed. All right. 
and then at the end, you just the last thing that you should hear is dispatcher 04. That's me. You know what I'm saying? And and that that signs it off. No K at the end of that because that if you say K now you're waiting for the person to come back. Dispatcher has the last one. Right. Right. All right. Let's see if we got anything else. A uh, lot well, question. Uh, suppose you're going radio to radio and the dispatch is not in it. Yes. How do you end it then, the last person? Um, this is uh, mobile mm -hmm. for often clear okay. on on the tactical channel. So, so what if you you call into the dispatcher, the dispatcher doesn't answer? That's what I said in the beginning. If if like if you call them for a radio check, or yeah, or anything. I'm or not. right. Okay, if you know that I'm on the air, but you're going to call the dispatcher first, you're going to call EVT base first. If the EVT base doesn't get back to you, then you call me directly. Or you right. can call any station. Okay. You say, Let's say if we're talking about radio checks, you can say any station, any station for a radio check. Right. You know, but, the, but before you go either to any station or a specific person, you go to the dispatcher. Now, what Stu just said was this is when you're on the repeater channel. Because the channel that we're on now is a tactical channel, simplex, radio to radio. There's no I don't there's no um dispatcher. No dispatcher on that. Well, this this one didn't go out like you we mean were no, doing it the other yeah, day. No, that went out right. to, to everybody. Right. Okay. Well, you, mean, you know, we're, we're supposed to have somebody manning the the radio here as the official dispatcher 24-7. Okay. Eventually right. we'll have that. Okay. And but why, <laughs> sometimes the dispatcher is not there because we don't have the personnel right, right now. Right but, now. So nobody answers. But then you want to call Hijack. Mm -hmm. And I was asking, well, how do you sign off at the end? Because you don't do the distance dispatcher so-and-so. Right. Because it's Unit 4 talking to Unit 7. And neither one of you are the dispatcher. So, so I was asking how do you end uh, that one. Uh, yeah, you say uh, off, my question. You say off or clear off the tactical channel, whatever channel you're on. Okay. You okay. say uh, this is clear so. off the tactical channel. Right. You, you might be on the theater channel too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Now, um, everybody's kind of run, but one of the things that I wanted to mention is that I want everybody to kind of think of some some part of what we're doing, what you fit into. Because um, the, the training is, we have emergency, but we got an infrastructure that we're trying to build. And so we need help with the infrastructure. So I'm, I'm asking any, everybody to like see if they could at least give an hour a week to doing something of what, of what we're going to have a long list of things that need to be done, mm -hmm. but we're going to be asking you because it we, it doesn't make any sense. It's going through the training, and then you know there's not a hurricane for four years. You know everybody's dispersed, and mm -hmm. all of this would have been for naught. But if we staying in communication mm -hmm. with each other and we're working with each other, like as we get in radio, the people that that that's in the forefront of of Helping out, they the ones that's going to get the radios, right. and you know, and and this is the way we're going to try to expand. So, um, not next week, well, maybe even next week the list might start coming up. And I'm not saying you got to pick right away, but by the time we get to the sixth week and we finishing up, everybody needs to kind of, you know, have some kind of idea of where they could help out in this thing. And I'm not looking, you know. To uh, I mean personally, what I do, and I'm not asking anybody to do that, but I go out to Brooklyn six hours a week to take. Act, that's actually a ten-hour thing because it's two hours out, yeah, two, hours two hours back. back. Mm -hmm. So and then I'm out there six hours. I ain't asking everybody to do that. Right. Um. But we need people. We need that if we're gonna be involved in this, we gotta look like we gotta give something to it. You understand, and there's going to be a payback because, because as time goes on and we build this thing, it ain't going to always be about volunteering. I mean, we got to take this out into the to the street. 
we got to take this to organizations and stuff like that. That's you all. You all got to do what we do. But we want to. We want it so that if you got to get in a cab and this mm -hmm. time of night and take a bed, you, you can get in a cab and go and do what you got to do, and you can get home. Reverse, yeah. You understand? So, um, it, you know, and maybe even get a stipend if we can. Mm -hmm. If we can get to that, this is where we're trying to go. And then, you know, you know, about, you know, buddy, you gotta live. You know, so um, is you know, we're just asking that in your mind, it's not just about taking the six weeks when the six weeks is up. Bye. No, we're asking that we, you you look at the list of things that we have to do, pick out something that you think you can do, and you know help out as best as you can. Two questions. Yeah. Uh, the radio is where they come from the school, or is there has there, is there a fund? Has it been a great? Wow. Well, the the first set of radios, the radio station, gave us ten rates. All right, radio the radio station. Now we're out here trying. Our next step is we're trying to get these politicians together to give us some money. You, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's I'm always possibility. You don't have to, because I know. Right. I, I know. Gotta try, 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 don't let them get away. No, no, no I'm it. shaking my head because they should be tried now because Amen. we need to Amen. have it in black and white or at least out there where they're coming from. Amen. You know, so um, I, I, I'm with you with that. I'm with you with that. And I just, you know, that's one of our first steps. Um, we're going to be going like the Home Depot and all of these other places mm -hmm. too um, to, to, to try to develop. Have you have you begun a list of the different uh, granting like North Star, yeah, uh, Citizens these. Committee, et cetera, et cetera. We have a Star. few. We have uh -huh. actually, we have a person that the school because we presented this to the president, and the president was right with it and everything. Mm -hmm. So what they did is give us a person that will write the grant. Okay. But now we have to find the grant. Find the grant, right? Right. That guy is not going to write the grant. Foundation Center is a good place to yeah. go down on 17th yeah. Street. Yeah. You can so, take three courses. Down. Right. So um, the uh, that's that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Maybe maybe somebody works around the corner from the Foundation Center and they could take an hour of their time to go in and, and, and go. You see, this is what I meant when I said outreaching to people and people just being interested to stay and connect. There may be somebody out there who is a grant writer who's willing to help on that. Yeah. So when when you get a large amount of people involved, these different types of professional people yeah. step forward. Come so in right. and they resources. step forward, you know, as resources. Right. And um, that's why I think um, I'm trying to set up my my. Uh, I haven't used my mailing list for a little while, but um, I think I'm gonna start getting back into using it, and I'll be putting WEBT out there in terms of. Uh, Join WBT or something to get folks at least it, with the Twitter handle, get people to start to um, at least sign on to get information. Right. I think having a large user base also helps when you're applying for grants, mm -hmm. even if they are not um, one of the volunteers. The fact, let's say that you said you had five thousand people on your Twitter, mm -hmm. it's going to mean something. Mm -hmm. Even if funny. not all five thousand are the volunteers, you can reach those people. Right. That's what's important. That, that, that's definitely. definitely. So um, this is this is where we're going with this, and and actually continue continue technically technologically getting ourselves upgrading ourselves with this. You know, we're gonna continue doing that, and and at the same time grow the the whole object. It, you know, the whole uh, what would I say? Uh, goal is actually northern New York. Mm -hmm. We're looking from 96th Street up to the. Mm -hmm. To where this guy is at, which is past New York, um, and that's that's a lot of people. That's a lot of. That's people. a whole bunch of people. That's <laughs> that, we're talking about millions. Let's go through the census numbers. Yes. That's a lot of people. That's we're talking about millions. So once you have um, input to control of millions of people in a disaster, people got to talk to you. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, they just came with no idea. I, I mean, I mean, they no, might try to, to take it, it from you. Have to put it. Yeah, that yeah, that's it. You that's know what I'm saying? But that is one reason why I said they got to be more and more. But they ain't going to mess with you. I know that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. They, they mess with you, bro. Listen, they mess with Obama, so they're going to mess with me. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the crew here at home. They ain't going to mess with you. Oh, I don't know. But they scary bunch. <laughs> they just, you know, do a lot of flexing. And people who aren't secure about what they're they about, they about. get scared and they start running. But this crew is really, they feel So I would go to them and see if they give you anything. If not, sure. just just yeah. roll. Yeah. We just so, roll. We do what we got to do. Because yeah. that's one thing I believe is that if they're flying that banner, if they're flying that, if they got that banner hanging outside the door, we are about such and such and such. Then, and they're talking about representing the populace, the public, that we need to, you know. You know oh, no, I, I, I truthfully yeah. and 155% agree with you. It's just that we got folks running around clear. with $3,000 uh, uh, Italian suits. Because we ain't calling them out. Is not taking care of business. Because folks are not stepping to the wall. This is now. what I'm saying. And the people who do start getting labeled as the troublemaker. And everybody else is that. going to them, could I have this, could I have that? <laughs> It's oh, like people don't even know how to write their own grants anymore if they don't get it from a politician. I mean, this is crazy. But, you know, we let a lot of that stuff happen in our community, so we've got to take some of the hit for what, what has happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, can't, we can't put it on other people 100%. Well, hey, but hey, not 100%. Hey, listen, we can't put too much on other people. It's all about us. We, get, we got the power. We go. don't use it. Right. We don't use it. There you go. We got the power and we got the know-how. So, I mean, just this small group that's here. If you if you see the the uh, the resources, the mental resources that's in this group, it's it's forget it, sure. forget it, forget it. And all we got to do is just kind of keep working together and try to keep some unity and don't let the little little things because there's always going to be some problem there's always going to be you know a, a problem but we can't let the little problems you know we got to keep communications open and that's what this is about communication so um, we just got to keep it going i was also thinking because i know you were saying that you needed people to help you get the uh, stuff organized in the uh, room next door mm-hmm. Last week. Oh, in the cabinet. In the cabinet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You might want to uh, think about holding maybe something like an organizing party or whatnot. Bring people out. Yes. Yeah. some, so you can hand out flyers and whatnot. People are interested. Yes. Yeah. And have other folks just come, maybe a pizza or something with you, and just start. Right. You know, put two or three hours in and get it straight down. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> got some bigger projects. Better use that theory on. <laughs> well, that might be good too. That might work. Because I mean, you know, it, it, it's in there. It's just too many people in there would just be stumbling over each other because right. it's just a one cabinet, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's there's things that have to be done. First of all, um, the, at some point in time, at some point in time soon, they're going to be um, renovating in there. So all this stuff got to be moved around, and we got to figure out how we're going to operate and all of that. So we're definitely going to need a, a work party. Renovating for WEBT or renovating? Renovating the station. 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 But, I mean, we're part of the station, and um, we're part of the station, and uh, this is basically our face. So I mean, we have to kind of... Act like we own it. Act like we own it. Yep. Okay. Is that it? Mm -hmm. One more? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you got more? No, we got plenty more, but I don't know if we got the time right now. Oh, Oh, thank you. Um, I didn't go up. Are we getting Mm -hmm. to start? Mm -hmm. It's starting. When's the start for one hour? To, like, keep the after the class, after the class, we're not putting any, any, so what you say?
No, go ahead. What just what you guys say? No, I'm saying I'm not putting any any burdens on anybody. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. I'll let you know. Okay, this guy been here like that. Yeah, let me show you. Somebody had asked me anything. Now, you know, it's a last week. Um, and they said, well, you can't stay with your phone. You're going to school. Because the phone is doing some work. I'm going to come in until last week. And I haven't had anything. So, is there somebody I could talk to? Because I'm doing a lot of these groups. So, I need to stay up every now and then. I need to do it. All right. Come in. Um, can you come in anytime in the daytime? I'm good during daytime. Right after um, I have a meeting in the morning. The session's at 9 30. All right. Let me ask. Now, what I found is that it's always sitting in there. It's the green is not charged. When it's red, that's the green is charged. They yeah. say they're doing it to me. I got to do a little juggling around. Yeah. But it gives me an opportunity to jump on all those go courses because I'm so behind. Yeah. I really need to right find. I don't have a, a box at home where I can oh, read. Oh, it is? No, no. For, uh, this one with a yes. It's, it's, it's coming in the email, too, right? Yeah. Okay. You know about the on and off, on and off. Um, you know, online courses. And then we'll okay. so that would be a big help. Okay. Columbia already went through its um, midterm thing. Well, so now they're not doing their 24 hours. Um, what are you doing? Obviously, it's what we normally do. We can talk to us. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 But I'll tell you what, I'm not the secretary and I do not, I'm not a good so that that one I can raise that much that's citywide. Okay. And the folks I broke up. Right, right. We can just listen. We can't talk okay. to them, but we can listen. But don't answer for some reason yeah. if I'm on the train or whatnot, just say when to call you back. And I'll get, get right back. So I can listen to the train a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then you take a number already? No, no, no. You, no. You know, you got to take 42. Okay, you take 42. Oh, Lord. Thank you, man. Mm. Uh, okay. You don't have enough hours in the day. No. Okay. This is okay, everybody so trying to say you're doing okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I'll take you. All right, man, thank you. Thank you. Other thing I was going to talk to you about, you probably already thought about this in terms of the high school students in particular, mm -hmm. getting like a junior group together. Mm -hmm. I'm working on to that. Get involved. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that as you speak. That one's in the box. I'm catching them before they even get to high school. Right. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Trying to get some people in here. Yeah, I like this group. And that, like the, the, the lady was sitting at the door. She's like a vendor. Uh huh. And so she's seeing all kinds of people. You know, this one here is talking about you know re revamping her her uh, her list. Oh, that that lady right here in the in the blue, the last one to leave. Yeah. Damn sure, I look like a damn bag lady, man. She start talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Okay. I'm not, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Smart as a whip. Start talking about all that social media. I didn't know what she was saying. You want to say that? No. Which language is that written in? P.A.P. I didn't say that. He asked me if I want to say nothing. I don't even know what the heck. How to get that? Okay, hold on. Step it. Okay, so what it is, this has to come up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Ah, oh, that's, that's a secret. Okay. It took me a while. Yeah. <laughs> I was learning while y'all yeah. was learning. <laughs> No, I, I don't know how late I was long <laughs> here. Here with this thing, man. <laughs> hey, you want to get that to Bob, please? Okay. Yeah. Put that in. Well, then, uh, Tom? No, in the uh, You're on here. Thank <laughs> you. 